There is no feeling like descending deep into the sacred burial chambers of the pyramids. It fills me with both wonder and mystery. And Egypt is full of mystic monuments. The vast desert landscape is dotted with over a hundred pyramids. Most picture the three great pyramids of Giza, but on this trip I wanted to go further and deeper and explore some of the pyramids that are less known to the casual tourist. My intrigue took me south, to Saqqara, Memphis, and Dashur. I was blown away with the sights I beheld, and this is how it went. Good afternoon guys, and welcome to Giza, Egypt. I just took a flight from Luxor to Cairo, and then from the Cairo airport, it's about an hour's drive all the way across town to Giza, but Ubers are super cheap around here. Like that hour Uber costs like seven bucks to get all the way across Cairo, which is just such a massive city. And when you finally get to Giza and the pyramids start to hit the horizon, it's just the most like surreal drive. So Anyways, I've just checked into my apartment here for the next couple days and it is beautiful. I have this nice porch out here with this amazing pyramid view. I think this afternoon I'm just going to hang out around the apartment, actually just enjoy this place, enjoy the living room, enjoy this view out here on the porch, and then tomorrow we're going to try to hit as many pyramids as we can over on this side of Giza because there's so much more than just the Great Pyramids here. I'll see you guys tomorrow and we'll do some of the pyramids, so I'll see you then. Good morning guys. I woke up at like 6 this morning to enjoy the sunrise from my balcony and just check out this view. It's just so beautiful out here. I have this massive porch just looking right over the pyramids. It's amazing. I have a coffee. And yeah, great way to start the day. Usually when I come to Cairo, you can actually just stay in Cairo and do a day trip out to the pyramids. There's not a ton to do in Giza besides seeing the pyramids, so you can just do a day trip. But I just love, there's like a couple like hotels and Airbnbs in this area that just have amazing views of the pyramids from where you're staying. And I think that's worth a couple nights coming out here, so. Yeah, just let me enjoy the sunrise for a little bit and then we'll grab an Uber to check out some of the other pyramids. Alright guys, so it's about 7.30 now and I just called the first Uber. I think I'm going to head to Saqqara Pyramid first, which is the oldest pyramid here and it's kind of like this old step pyramid. So I'm going to jump in the car here and drive about half an hour south to Saqqara. So let's check it out. Guys, so it took about 45 minutes to drive from Giza down here to the Saqqara necropolis but it was a cool drive you're just driving through these like little Egyptian villages interesting drive but definitely took a while but yeah here I am at Saqqara I'm pretty excited because I've never been to Saqqara before so this is like a new area for me to explore and yeah some of the oldest pyramids and oldest stone structures built by man are here so yeah, let's check it out. Mickey Mouse, come on his name. <laughs> you named him Mickey Mouse? Why? Yeah, Mickey Mouse. Why did you name him a mouse when he's a camel? This is his name. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> that makes sense. All right, so right at the beginning here, you just hike up over these sand dunes and you just start to see the step pyramid of Dioser right here, which is kind of the main focal point of the Saqqara Necropolis. It's 
So before I get to the pyramids here, to the left as I came up the dunes, there's this like avenue here. And then at the end of the avenue, there's like this massive pit right here, which is really interesting to see. Not sure what it is. <laughs> All right, so right in the middle of this long avenue, we have the tomb of the two brothers, and it was actually buried under the desert until about 1965 when they found this tomb. So as I walk up this little avenue, we just have like these walls that kind of line the way. We have this nice paved, avenue path and then there's like all these just kind of periphery tombs just off on one side or the other and then as we're walking we can see the pyramid of Djoser uh, just to the side here and then there's this mound of dirt up ahead but I think that was also a pyramid at one time it's kind of a cool place to explore and it's a lot less busy than the Giza complex so I'm excited to kind of keep exploring this place One cool thing about this complex that you just don't really get in Giza as much, and I remember being kind of disappointed by it, is there's a lot more hieroglyphs here on some of these tombs. Even down here, there's like these tombs that are like half buried with sand still, and it just gives a little bit more of like a discovery feeling to it. Check out some of these hieroglyphs here. They're amazing. These ones especially are so deep, deeply etched, wow. Alright, so there's some tombs here that you can go inside and there should be some colorful entrances. Alright, this is amazing. I've never been inside like these mini tombs here. There's just like a beautiful red hieroglyphics here and then there's this red door here that just has a bunch of hieroglyphs on it and yeah this is just amazing again in Giza there wasn't a lot of places that you could go in and see colorful hieroglyphics like this so this is really unique and cool to do here in Saqqara all right that was super cool exploring those teams but it's super annoying because this happens all over Egypt, but you just have these self-appointed tour guides and even like police officers that are like dressed in uniform. They like point you in a direction and they expect you to pay them money to go where you were going to go anyways. So it's just, it's exhausting, but it's so worth it. Anyways, we're at the end of this avenue here and there's just this pile of like rocks and sand here, but this used to be a pyramid, so I'm gonna go over and check that out. So, this crumbling pyramid here behind me is the Pyramid of Unas, and it was built in the like 2350 BC. And it was at one time, you can see parts of it were like this smooth sided pyramid, so it was all angled, but they speculate that. You know, parts of these big blocks were later removed to use in other construction projects all over Egypt. So that's why it's kind of like crumbling a little bit now. But, and then they also say that it may have been some poor building material since this was near the beginning of the pyramid building for the Egyptians. But it is really interesting because there's just like one part of it that you can see is super smooth and gives you an idea what the whole pyramid used to look like. And it just gives you a little bit of insight into how the pyramids were built, because on the outside you have these larger stones that were then cut at an angle to make the pyramid shape, but then beneath those larger stones you just had almost like these smaller bricks that were just kind of like layered like this. And you can see the change 
American building style from the large stone to these smaller bricks and it also helps explain why so much of it has kind of just eroded is it was just all these smaller bricks that were beneath those big blocks but it's almost like getting a cutaway of the pyramid so you can kind of see what it looks like on the inside but yeah very very interesting and then what's amazing is just how smooth cut and how precise this angle is on the outer edge it's amazing so i've never seen this before and i never noticed it but right here where we have the smooth stone that was the original outer layer of the pyramid of unas you can see hieroglyphs like up on the outer layer All right guys, so it looks like we can actually go into the Pyramid of Unas, so let's check it out. All right, it's a pretty narrow squeeze down this little alley. kind of loud down there but as you go down this like very narrow claustrophobic shaft the bottom of the pyramid just opens up and you're in this room that's just covered in beautiful hieroglyphs and the walls are the oldest inscriptions of the pyramid texts that have ever been found which were the instructions for the deceased pharaoh to enter the afterlife so very beautiful. I would definitely recommend going into some of the pyramids here in Saqqara. All right, let's keep uh, heading to the Step Pyramid. All right, guys, so I've just hiked up this little hill up from the Pyramid of Unas, and I've just found actually this peaceful little place where you can just look down at the Pyramid of Dozier. And then if you're really clever here, you can see so many pyramids off in the horizon. Like I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then 11, 12. Like you can just see 12 pyramids, at least like distinct pyramids from this viewpoint. It really gives you a better scope of how big this place was. And what's kind of cool here up on this hill, when you just look off this way, it's just vast, vast desert as far as you can see. Which is weird in Giza because you're up on the pyramids and you think you're out in like the middle of the desert, but then you just look off in the other direction and it's just this bustling city of Cairo and Giza where like 40 million people live. So this feels a little bit more out in the middle of nowhere for sure, which is kind of cool. Pyramid of Dozier here. It is the oldest man-made stone structure in the world. So it's the oldest pyramid here in Egypt. It was built in the 27th century BC for the Pharaoh Dozier. And yeah, it has this six steps to it. It was like one of the preliminary pyramid designs for the Egyptians. I mean, I love the Great Pyramids, but I'm just loving this Saqqara complex. It's just just there's so much to see, way more than I thought. Anyways, I'm gonna walk a little bit closer down back around this fence and get a little bit closer to the pyramids here. So before I head over to the Pyramid of Djoser, there's actually the Imhotep temple that kind of like is the entrance to this whole complex. So I'm gonna go check that temple out first and then head over to the pyramid and check it out a little bit closer. So let's go.
Thank you. I already have I already have the scarf. Yes, I know. Well, I think I told you with the scarf. It's okay. Thank you. You're from where? All right, guys. So I've just made it to the base of Dozier uh, Pyramid here, and you can see the blocks. And once again, kind of like the other pyramid over there, you can see some of the original outer layer here that's a little bit more smooth and shiny and you can see even some of these like etching marks that are probably remnants from either like the transportation or when they were actually making the blocks um, but it's pretty cool and then yeah these bricks are definitely a lot smaller than the ones you'll see at the great pyramid it's still amazing just how many bricks are here and i'm going to walk around the base of the pyramid here a little bit and just admire the 5,000 year old architecture. Alright guys, so I've just walked around the base of the step pyramid there. And just outside the fence here, we have just a couple more like small crumbling pyramids. And then also just here, there's there's a bunch of ruins that are kind of being like sorted out here. Um, that maybe once was like another like courtyard or plaza. I just love walking around this place. And again, the fact that this is one of the oldest man-made stone structures in the world just blows my mind because it's so big, you know, like these buildings we're so much bigger than anything we built in the modern era for thousands of years. So that's about it for the Saqqara necropolis here. But that was way bigger than I ever imagined. I thought it was like just a step pyramid. So. I'm gonna leave the complex here. Um, hopefully I can get a taxi. I want to go to Memphis, and then there are some other pyramids, the Dushar Pyramid Complex that's only a couple miles from here as well. Just made it to Memphis, which is the old capital of ancient Egypt. This is kind of the heart of the historic Egypt and where Egypt essentially began. And this is where like all of the temples during Ramses II was built. So yeah, I'm kind of excited. I've never been to this part of ancient Egypt, so this will all be new to me. And I'm excited to kind of see some of these really old artifacts from the lower kingdom. So let's check it out. All right, so right as you enter the Memphis Museum here, to the right, there's this little enclosed area here that has the statue of Ramses II made out of one piece of limestone. So let's head in here and check this out. pretty cool. You can come up to the second level here and just look down on this statue and when you're down there walking around it you can just look at so much of the detail. There's some like hieroglyphs on his arm, the detail on his face, the shape of his nose and it's just such a massive statue and then coming up here and just being able to admire like the whole length of the piece is kind of unique because usually you know it's up high so you can't get so close to the face and everything so to see this craftsmanship that's like four or five thousand years old is amazing so at the edge of the museum here we have this giant Ramses II statue made out of red granite and on his wrist you can see a little bit of red paint and it's one of the, like the few colorful paintings that are left on some of the statues but apparently red was like used all throughout the city. So that's about it for the Memphis Outdoor Museum here. 
There's not a lot to see, but seeing those couple like giant Ramses II statues like up close was su super cool. And then there's just a bunch of fragments of other temples and other statues and stuff that all have like hieroglyphs. But if you're coming out to Saqqara and Dashur, then it's a good little stop over here. But then I want to head to Dashur for the afternoon to check out those pyramids. Right, guys so we've just gotten to the Dashur complex and we are very remote here and it was quite the drive just to get into this place so I actually had to make a deal with my taxi driver because it'd be impossible to get an Uber or a taxi here home so I'm paying him like an extra like 15 bucks to stay here and he'll drive me all the way back to Giza which is like an hour hour and a half but Anyways, I'm very excited to see these pyramids. I've never come here before. There's the Bent Pyramid, the Red Pyramid, the Black Pyramid, but I'm starting here all the way at the Bent Pyramid. So let's check this out. This pyramid was built in 2600 BC by Pharaoh Sneferu. And they believe it's bent because originally they were building it at a certain angle, but then they found that that angle was structurally unsound, so they had to kind of taper the angle a little bit. So that's why it has this bend. And the pyramid itself is about 350 feet high, and the bend is about one third of the way up the total height. So. Anyways, the other cool thing about these pyramids here, like south of Giza, is that we're seeing a lot more of the original exterior of this just kind of like smooth rock. And it's just amazing to see how like precise that angle was. And so yeah, let's get right underneath to so see it a little bit closer. So I'm right here at the base of this bent pyramid. And just look at how massive these stones are. And then right here, I can come right underneath where we get that like more smooth exterior and you can see the bottom of these just super flat surfaces. And then here on the ground, we see one of the original like exterior pieces that has a bit more of that triangular or pyramid shape to it and we can just see and feel how smooth its construction was. Just look at this. It's amazing. It's unbelievable to be here. And then off in the distance here we can see the red pyramid and then on the other side there's the remnants of the black pyramid. So on the north facing side of the bent pyramid here there's some stairs that take you up to the entrance to the pyramid. So I'm gonna see if I can head into the bent pyramid here. Let's check it out. You guys just climbed up these stairs and from up here you just have, again, a beautiful view looking back on the red pyramid. And now I'm gonna head inside the bent pyramid here. So let's check this out. so steep and so shallow. It really hurts your knees because you're like bent down the whole time and barely even halfway and I'm already so tired. I should have not watched The Mummy last night. This is too scary. And I'm guessing there's no emergency exit if anything happens down here. It's so deep. It just keeps going. just gotten all the way down to the inner chamber here and it's actually this like really high ceiling and there's another set of stairs that can take me all the way up to the top of this chamber so I guess I'll do it since I came all the way down here but that was exhausting all right I've just made it to the top of the chamber here and there's this tiny little tunnel 
that it can crawl through, which this is, this is really terrifying. The previous people said there's a bunch of bats in the next room, so I have to be really quiet as to not disturb them, because that would just be terrifying to be in this little chamber with a bunch of active bats, so let's go. Okay guys, that was actually so scary. Like all these bats, they were starting to like twitch and everything. And I was just like, I have to get out of there. And in order to get out of there, you have to like crawl. And it was just terrifying. I felt like I was making so much noise. And I was like, what would you even do if these bats started like freaking out and attacking you? You're like deep in this pyramid. So that was terrifying. I'm like shaking. So, all right, now I gotta climb all the way back up out of this thing. That was exhausting. Oh my gosh, guys, that was exhausting. And I'm not easily frightened, but that was actually kind of scary. And it was, if you're like claustrophobic and can't bend down and you have bad knees, it'd be impossible. And then all the bats, that was just really, really, it was cool, but exhausting <laughs> and kind of scary. So anyways, I made it out safely. I have to decide if I want to go inside the Red Pyramid as well, because I don't know if it's going to be as hard, but yeah. So, all right guys, coming out of the pyramid here, we're turning to the right and we're going to take a look at what's left of the Black Pyramid. So you knew there were bats in there and you didn't tell me. That's why you didn't go in. Ah. I wish you spoke English. <laughs> All right guys, so it's still about a mile and a half away and I don't think I'm gonna bother hiking all the way over there, but that's what's left of the Black Pyramid. And it was one of the original pyramids here in the Dashur complex. But as you can see, it's a little bit lower and it was built using a lot of mud bricks inside. So with the flooding of the Nile, and the poor building material, not using limestone, but using mud brick, a lot of it has disintegrated, as you can see. So it's just kind of like a deteriorating mound of what's left of the core of the pyramid. All right, we're off to see the Red Pyramid. The Red Pyramid's only just about a mile from the Bender Pyramid. Right, guys so we've just driven back to the red pyramid here and unfortunately it closes in like three minutes so I won't be able to go inside which I'm actually kind of thankful that I don't have to make that decision because that one pyramid was enough for me today I think so actually I did two today so they call it the red pyramid because it just has a bit more of a reddish hue to it from the red pyramid here you can just see the bent pyramid just behind it and so it's kind of cool you can see these two pyramids in succession but yeah unfortunately we don't have a lot of time we have to head back to giza it's going to get dark pretty soon so yeah but just wanted to show you guys this it, again it's been really cool checking out these kind of alternative pyramids here besides just the pyramids of giza i highly recommend especially saqqara because it was so much more than just the step pyramid there was a whole bunch of other ruins surrounding Saqqara. We have about an hour drive back to Giza, so I'll see you guys tomorrow.
traffic is so bad here in Pisa. I just decided to get out of my taxi and walk because I'm actually like faster than the cars here. It's just crazy. 